This is Andy Tube, and this video is part of my series on a Singer Model 327K. And again, this is a Spartan badge, but it's made by Singer, and uh, it's very similar to the Singer badged 327K. And I believe in one or two of the previous videos, I mentioned that. Um, when I got the machine, I noticed there's some binding um, in the mechanics. As I turn it, there would be a certain place where it it would bind up a little bit, and if I keep turning, it would get you know more of a normal operation. And uh, in the beginning, I uh, of the troubleshooting, I loosened the stop motion knob and turned and I s still felt some binding which surprised me but I have since pulled the hand wheel off and and cleaned and lubricated on the shaft there and the binding uh, I was having with only the hand wheel and motor belt and motor that's gone but when I re-engaged everything um, the binding came right back and there's a few things that can cause binding uh, on a machine. Some of the more common things are a bent needle bar. And um, as the bent part passes through one or the other of the bushings, it, it, it binds because it's bent. You know, it could be a bend right here. And when it goes in and out of this bushing, it it binds. It could be a bind up uh, above the needle bar clamping and so it would bind as it went into the top. Um, now depending on where the bend is you could just feel one spot binding or you could feel two. For example if it was if it was uh, in this area as it went up through um, the bushing and then the bend cleared it you would feel um, binding and then release but then binding right again on the way down and that was not my experience I just had binding in one place of the cycle but I had pulled the needle bar out already and inspected it and it was not bent you know so um, Another common thing is the, on this type of machine, is the, um, the bell crank uh, hook system here. Get the light adjusted a little bit. Because this uh, crank goes back and forth, and it's run off of this uh, vertical shaft, and there is a Pittman rod that connects right there. So that's uh, pretty easy to do is take out one screw or in my case both and I just remove the Pitman rod. These are what the the uh, hinge screws for it look like. You know they just they just, uh, just go in the bushing and then into the crank and into the uh, crank on this end and these these are counterclockwise screws by the way so to loosen them you turn right to tighten them you turn left so anyway I, I took that off and then I'm turning the hand wheel um, I, I still had this little bit of binding so that eliminated this whole crank system as being the problem because it's not connected anymore. It doesn't move uh, when I'm turning the hand wheel, but I still have the binding. And then to verify that, because uh, these parts here could bind too, but look, without the Pitman, they, it's so loose and free, you know, it's not a problem. And by the way, I had um, lubricated the machine real well before I started troubleshooting because that can uh, free up binding right away, you know, on an old machine. 
So it's not it's not the hook crank anyway, and uh, it was not the Pitman uh, connection. It, it's really hard to get this too tight because the screw only goes in so far. Um, but if it was not seated properly, or the screw had stripped or something, and the, the hinge stud was at an angle, that, that could bind it too. But not the, not the case here, okay? So, um, let's see, another thing can be that the crank, not the crank, I'm sorry, the camshaft uh, gear at the uh, bottom of the camshaft is adjusted too close to the worm gear on the arm. Uh, that can happen, it's a little more rare. Uh, you can also have um, binding of the arm shaft. Okay, and there's a thrust collar. Let's see if I can get some more light here. There is a thrust collar. Mm -hmm. um, right, right here. It's just a collar that goes around the horizontal arm shaft and it butts up against the bushing in the casting. And that's to, to keep um, horizontal movement in the arm shaft from, from happening. You know, you don't want any play where it bounces back and forth, but if it was jammed up too tight against the bushing, you could get binding. Now, usually if this is the case, you just have binding all the time. You know, every every little um, movement of the hand wheel, it's just bound, 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 bound. And mine was more in uh, free, and then one little spot it would bind. But anyway, uh, if you wanted to check this, what you do is, uh, if you see, there's one set screw that holds this collar to the shaft. So I, I loosened that and I couldn't move the collar. So I, I took it all the way out and I, I put in a little WD-40 to unstick and loosen all the old oil and stuff in there. And then I just stuck a, a, um, a screwdriver in between the edge of the collar. Well here, I'll show you. In between the edge of the collar and the bushing like that and then you, you twist the screwdriver and it pushed the bushing right away and then with the bushing not anywhere near I mean the collar sorry with the thrust collar not anywhere near the bushing I rotated everything and I still had this little binding spot so it wasn't the thrust collar so I put it back and tightened it up and then I, I remembered some sometimes in the past I had I had a couple of cases like this and this is another place that you would normally look and it's this thread take up lever system so when you um, this is actually the take up lever right here with this little piece that goes down here this little kind of like elbow that's the take up lever and then this piece that goes from the hinge over to a hinge stud is called the the, the take up lever connecting link the hinge stud is put into um, the casting and it's tightened with a set screw on the top and I'll show you that in a moment okay and then let me turn this a little bit where this connecting link comes down it's kind of a three-way thing going on here this can the 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 end tail of the take up lever connects to a hinge that also connects to the needle bar connecting link this bigger piece that goes down that 
where you have this clamping screw housing goes into the needle bar connecting link so that when the needle bar crank that big weight looking thing in the back as it turns and it's hinging this that's what makes your needle bar connecting link go up and down and since the needle bar is clamped to it that's what makes your your needle bar go up and down Okay, now this, I said this is a three-way because besides these two links, there's a swivel stud that goes right into that big needle bar crank. Okay, and when you set the crank just about like that, there's a hole up here in the casting and you put your screwdriver in and go down there. You can, if you can see the tip of that, right above where that uh, hinge stud goes in. Whoops, that was that was a bad view. Right above the hinge stud is a set screw. Okay. So so to connect all this to the needle bar crank, which is where it gets all its power, you have a hinge stud with a set screw in the needle bar crank that you access right here from the top and then you have this uh, hinge stud here with a set screw up at the top here now when this is removed for cleaning or uh, maybe this take up lever got bent or broken um, whatever um, these studs are pulled out and you do your cleaning or your repair work and then you push these studs back in and there's a certain way to tighten the set screws for these and uh, if you if you do it wrong that can cause a minor misalignment of of this part right here and I started thinking that's what I got because right about here, this area was where my binding would would come in when I was rotating the hand wheel. It's like it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Oh, it's feeling a little. Oh, it's kind of binding. Oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. So. Um, when you put these back in, you you put the you put the stud through these two links, and you push it all the way in so all these pieces are back flush with the needle bar counterweight where it goes in the hole, and then you come up in the top, and you tighten the set screw. So so this is just flush up against. The needle bar crank and you do that first okay then you have to um, go and tighten the set screw for this stud is when you when you since these parts are all connected you, you kind of have to pull the two studs out at the same time and put them back in at the same time and of course you have to remove your presser bar your needle bar the vibrating bracket you have to do all of that to get this out but if where I found my binding was with this hinge stud and set screw okay and, and I know what happened here was somebody pushed the studs in and then maybe tighten this one first or push this one in all the way and put the screwdriver down here and tightened it. Then they went over and they pushed and held this one in and tightened this set screw. And that's that's the wrong way to do it. Um, what has to be done is this one is first, and then this one, you you gently push the connecting link back against the body, the hole in the body there for it. But you, you have to be rotating the hand wheel 
while you tighten this up. And that lets this linkage find its own non-binding place. Okay, so you can you can turn it by hand while you're tightening this top set screw, or you can run the motor uh, slowly like that while you're tightening that top set screw. And that, like I said, it lets it lets that linkage just kind of find its own non-binding place it settles into as you slowly tighten that set screw and that prevents this binding so that was my suspicion uh, I said I had already oiled everything but what I did I went back and I put some drops of crud cutter just pure 100% crud cutter at all the oil points shown in the instruction manual where I had oiled and I let that sit there about a minute and then I put uh, you know with an eyedropper I put a couple drops of alcohol to flush that out and then I got in there with my oil rag and some q-tips and I cleaned that all up then I put fresh oil on everything and I verified I still had my binding. So I knew, okay, it's not because it's junked up or, or dried oil and varnished uh, oil and stuff that's making it stiff, because it's very clean and freshly oiled, but it's still binding. So <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a view up here for a moment. This is the access hole right here in the casting where you put your screwdriver in to go into the uh, set screw that sits right above that hinge stud, right? So here's, a, here's another view of that, right? right there that's how you go in and loosen or tighten that set screw okay and then this other hole up at the top or not hole well it will it, it will be a hole <laughs> this is the set screw for the other hinge stud so that's what that's what I'm going to be working on but I wanted I wanted you to see it and it's not like countersunk in there I don't know if you can see it here it sticks up you know it sticks up out of the body it's not one of those um, flush or countersunk set screws like this one down here it's just a screw really sitting up on the top that goes against that hinge stud to hold it so um, to start to start to continue my uh, let's see raise this up a little to continue the troubleshooting what I did is go up here and and this is normal lefty Lucy and I removed this um, set screw I took that out and then usually at this point you can pull on this connecting link a little and you'll get a little movement and I didn't get much movement okay so uh, what I did was just put some oil down in that hole for the set screw so it would go in and get on this stud then with some fresh oil right down inside on that stud, I ran the machine a little bit, okay? I mean, I ran it like for about a minute, okay? Then, when I turned my hand wheel, the binding was gone. There was no more binding anywhere, and especially at this point in the cycle where I always had this binding right up in this area 
So I, I said, great, okay, that was my binding uh, point. So now with that oil and having it worked in, I could, I could, I don't know how well that's going to show on the video, but there's a little tiny movement in and out of that stud. So to re um, connect and tighten this um, hinge stud, I put my set screw back in there and just barely tightened it until I first by by hand until I first felt it felt it touch the hinge stud just hinge stud just barely okay now now this is where you want to turn the hand wheel by hand or uh, by running the motor and have the crank, the idea is you have the crank moving, finding its spot while you, while you slowly um, tighten this set screw. Okay. And so that, I, I like to just go ahead and run the, run the motor because it turns the, the crank a lot more and it, and so forth but first I just run it I want to make sure the part gets warmed up like the operating temperature so I'll run it a minute or two then I'm gonna run it slowly while I tighten that set screw I just go here and just just gently push it in just gently and then I'll get my screwdriver ready to tighten it and then I'll slowly run the motor and then I'll just start slowly tightening that set screw So that was about a, a, a close to a half turn, I would say. And I'm just going to give it one little last to make sure I'm in there. Now I don't have any movement now like I had before of this connecting link, but the question is, did my binding come back or not? And when I turn it by hand, I do not feel that binding. It doesn't feel any different when when it's in this part of the cycle that, than when it's in this other part. I don't have the binding anymore. So so that's how you can uh, eliminate a binding up in this uh, system. Is 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 this um, stud pushed all the way in? So you could loosen them both. Make sure this is pushed all the way in um, and then retighten the set screw through here and then uh, turn the hand wheel by hand or slowly with the motor like I did and while all the parts are moving slowly tighten this back up. Okay. And if, if, if you're having binding from this area, that should clear it up for you. Now you could also have play. If you hear a funny clicking and stuff up here, if one of these uh, set studs, um, set studs, one of these hinge studs wasn't all the way in and somebody tightened the set screws and there's a little space, you, you where if you go up here and you could move this back and forth even a tiny bit even even a you know 64th of an inch or less or with this connecting link if you could move it on the stud then that would be called end play and that's not good either for the machine 
but you would fix end play or binding um, the same way. Loosen both set screws. Push this one with all the links just up against the needle bar crank, you know, and go in through the top and tighten that set screw. Then while, while the hand wheel's turning, either mechanically or electrically, uh, before, just, just gently push this to make sure it's kind of up against the frame. But as you turn, this will, this will minutely move from the tension against this and this, these parts, and it will just line up to the most freest place it can find to turn. And while it's moving, you just slowly tighten that back up. And that worked real good for me in this uh, case. So, that was binding. And like I said, it could also eliminate end play up in that part of the machine. So, uh, then what I did was I put my, my uh, hook crank pitman rod um, back on here right and uh, tighten it back up by turning the screws to the left and then I turned the hand wheel uh, by hand uh, to to make sure that there wasn't any other binding um, but these um, hinge screws went back in very cleanly and smoothly so I didn't there wasn't any thread stripping or anything like that and as I saw from before with the pitman unattached this turns very freely and uh, there's not you know there's not any there's not any play in this so I was golden that's it eliminating binding in the thread take up lever system of a Singer model 327 and uh, many many more Singer models every machine has some kind of a take up lever right and um, one other thing that that you you will see where I said if you um, mm, where people people push this uh, hinge stun it all the way and tighten it and then they push this all the way in and tighten it uh, sometimes people tighten this one first because it's like hey the screws right up here they they work this in and the screws right here so they held this in and tighten this screw and then they went over and pushed this in for sure and went through the body down in and tightened that screw. And that really can make binding. That, that can really, uh, you know, like the, the first time they turn it to see how they did, they should say, wow, I did something wrong. It's so hard to turn. <laughs> okay. You might not have seen that before. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you come back and see some more of this 327K Spartan or any of the other 400 plus videos on my channel. And uh, in the meantime, take care of yourself, okay?